just want to say thank you, Pastor Levi, just for giving me this opportunity to come up here and share with you guys again. Say thank you to you and Katie. I know Katie's in kids' church. She's always missing out. Um, before I really get started, I actually, I feel like God was putting some people in my heart that I wanted to highlight, and it's the first person that I'm thinking about isn't here. Um, the second person is, though, and Robin, uh, God was putting you on my heart when I was getting ready to come up here, and I was just thinking about you, and I just wanted to honor you and say thank you. The first thing that came into my mind when I was thinking of you is I got a picture of like a firework. And it's like being a little kid again, like you see the lights, you see all the colors, and you're like in awe. And Robin, the one thing I kept getting for you is, Robin, you are shameless, but you are bold. You come into the room like a firework, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for that so much, because I've seen that when I'm growing up, and I do treasure hunts with you, and you went and prayed for somebody that was in a wheelchair, and I was standing behind, I was like, this is kind of embarrassing because I, in my head, I'm going, that person can't help that they're in a wheelchair, but here's Robin who just wants to love on this person and pray for them. I just want to say thank you for that. And the second person that had my mind was Tina. I don't know if you knew I was going to highlight you, but Tina, I just wanted to say you are a teacher. I felt one thing, whenever I think of you, I hear spiritual mother. I just want to say that's so true about you because you're somebody who is so persistent and learning and wanting to know about the things of God, and it's so evident in your life. I mean, you are a teacher. Even when you speak something so simple, you go, you come over and pray for me, and I'm like, she's teaching me in this moment. I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open some prayer. You guys can bow your heads, whatever. I'm just going to talk to God. Um, God, I thank you for this morning. God, I thank you that we get to come here and meet together, have fellowship, and just talk to you. And God, I just ask, if you want to come and interrupt us, God, let it be. Have your way. And um, God, we just thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So last month in August, uh, Justin had invited me and Anakin both to like this weekend retreat a conference kind of thing that Justin was going to be speaking at, and he invited me and Anakin to be there to do ministry, to pray for people, prophesy, also be there for support, and I was excited. I am all in for it. By the time I heard that, I was like, it's been a while since I've been able to go to a church and, you know, just get to pray for people and do stuff like that, so I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go, and on one of our office days, we're doing some stuff, and I start asking Justin questions. I'm like, first off, where is it going to be? It's going to be at this really nice camp. Second thing, you know, what fun stuff there is to do. And the third thing that was most important in my own mind was, what's the rooming situation? Uh, I don't know why I didn't automatically assume this, but when I had asked, Justin told me, oh yeah, you're most likely going to be staying with the college girls from this church. I'm flooded with anxiety. He's watching me spiral as I'm sitting in this office chair. I'm, I'm like rambling. I'm asking all these questions like, seriously? And this normally wouldn't have caused me so much stress and worry and anxiety in that moment. But I'll share with you to explain. Uh, my last mission trip that I did was to Paraguay. It was an amazing trip. Don't get me wrong. I did have one situation, though, and that was my rooming situation. I was staying with eight other girls who already like all knew each other because they're from a group that's like YWAM and stuff. And um, eight other girls, I was a little anxious because I have a little bit of social anxiety, but the other half of me was like, I'm going to be getting to meet like tons of girls who are my age, who do missions. Like I'm trying to get excited about it. I get there uh, and long story short, I felt alone. I felt completely outcasted. Like, for some reason, conversations were just short. My attempts didn't work. I don't know why. I don't feel like I'm a hard, like, I don't feel like it's difficult to approach me or have a conversation. But that's just how it happened. And I hated the situation so much just because nobody likes feeling alone, right? In a room with eight other people. So here I am feeling alone. Meanwhile, Justin and Anakin 
are sharing with me that the guys in their room from the YWAM team, they're sharing stories, they're praying over each other, they might have been braiding each other's hair. I'm getting a little, like, I'm getting a little jealous, but I want to bring it back to about this retreat. This is all I can think of. I'm going to be staying with a bunch of girls again, and possibility of this happening again, of me feeling outside and alone was just repeating in my head over and over again. I was riddled with anxiety. The next day comes, uh, Justin sends me and Anakin both like the sign up forms for this camp. I kind of like gloss over it. And in my head, I'm staring at my phone screen. I go to text Justin and I text him, I don't think I'm gonna go. Immediately, I get a phone call. <sighs> Justin gets on the phone and he starts telling me that I'm gonna go because he knew I was in my head over the situation, which I was. At the moment, I wasn't gonna admit it because I'm kind of stubborn and also mix that with anxiety, not a good combination. But I eventually accept that I'm gonna go despite my fears and put my trust in God. Finally get out of that anxiety funk and I remind myself to look at the whole point of going, you know, I'm gonna be excited, and then most importantly, I'm gonna to get to do ministry and have fun. We get to the camp on Friday evening, we have dinner, and we have like a little bit of free time before the night service, and we meet with the pastor and his wife, Ellie, and let me note this, I still don't know the rooming situation. I meet with uh, the wife, Ellie, and she hands us like these key cards that look like hotel style key cards. And I'm looking at this and I was like, key cards for a camp? Well, we match the stuff to the cabins and these are like the really nice cabins. And I'm looking at these cabins and then we get in and I realize I don't even have to share a room with anybody else. I'm getting a whole room to myself. And on top of that, I've got AC and also I've got a king size bed. And I'm kind of like freaking out and Justin's like, see, see, and him and Anna can get twin size beds. And I'm like, I was like, if you guys really want it, you can have it, like you're the guest speaker and all, but he's like, no, no. And uh, what was funny about this is that on the car ride there, Justin had just got done talking to me about trusting in God, that God would take care of me. I know I, I kind of emphasize the other stuff, but man, if you can understand how anxious I was over all of this, I hate saying it, but I have a tendency to overthink. So when I overthink, it's like the biggest deal in the room. But God had me and he took care of me. And also on top of that, the college age girls from that church were amazing. I actually had conversations with them and we laughed. This leads me to my first scripture. First Peter 5.7. I'm reading this out of the New Living Translation, says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. I like this passage. I love it because it's been a key scripture in my own life. Man, God cares about me, and I can give him my worries and my anxieties, and I have to remind myself each time I start to feel like I'm spiraling, God, you care for me in this moment. God, you care the way, about the way that I'm feeling right now. And just like my worries about that retreat, when I finally gave them to God, he showed me how much he cared for me. Right. Like a king size bed and air conditioning at a camp? This brings me to the title of my sermon, He Cares. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, he cares for me. That stress you maybe have been dealing with, he cares. The anxiety, he cares. The worry, he cares. The fear, he cares. Right. And we don't have to go through it alone because he cares. My next scripture is Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 through 8. And it says, My blessing is on those people who trust in me, who put their confidence in me. They will be like a tree planted near a stream whose roots spread out toward the water. It has nothing to fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. And it has no need to be concerned in a year drought. It does not stop bearing fruit. Jeremiah 17 says his blessings are on the people who trust in him, who put their confidence in him. After I had put 
my trust in him, his blessings were on me. And I'm not just talking about the nice room, but I was also blessed with him speaking to me prophetically, receiving words for people there and getting the opportunity to bless them back. Which leads me to my second story. Uh, on Saturday night of that retreat, Justin preached another amazing message. You know, it was okay. And uh, Holy Spirit was moving. And after the message, it was encouraged to everyone to step out and actually pray for each other and give words to each other. And in the middle of ministry time, I stood by my seat and I was like, okay, I'm gonna ask God, you know, give me a word. And I'm standing here with my hands in my pockets. I'm going, God, you know, what is it? And the picture that he gets in my mind is of a picture of the pastor. Not only that, it's a picture of the pastor, but of him as a bobblehead. <laughs> and on top of that, the bobblehead for some reason is clear. And the word I kept getting with it was transparency. And I'm standing there in my head, I'm talking to him, talking to God, and I'm going, God, I, I don't know what this means. Like, I don't even understand this word. How am I supposed to give this to somebody? And he goes, do you trust me? I stand there and I'm kind of having like this little argument with God in my head and I'm stalling myself from being obedient and going across the room to the pastor. And if you really know me, uh, whenever I get a little anxious, my hands get really, really sweaty. So I'm shoving them in my pockets and I'm staying there. And the last thing that finally pushed me over that was in my head was, if you don't be obedient, you're probably gonna regret it. I walk over to the pastor across the room, Pastor Paul, and I start off, hey, I know this is gonna sound really weird, but I got a picture of you as a bobblehead, uh, a clear bobblehead, and I got the word transparency. Does that mean anything? It's okay if it doesn't mean anything, but does it mean anything? He kind of laughs and Suddenly, he starts sharing with me that before he had ever even met his wife, God had given him this dream that had two bobbleheads in it. I'm like, he shares this with me, and I won't go into all the details, but I remember him saying that God was speaking something significant to him through the dream. We both kind of laughed, and... I was so worried that it was gonna be some bizarre word that meant nothing. Like who comes up to you and say, hey, I see you as a bobblehead. In fact, it's a clear one too. And I got the word transparency. I wanna go ahead and open into John chapter 14, verse 27. John chapter 14, verse 27 says, I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace. Not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. John says not to yield to fear, but be courageous. And let me tell you, I definitely had to be courageous in that moment and lean on God's peace as I gave that word to Pastor Paul. I want to encourage you, be courageous. Notice that it, it doesn't say you, you won't have fear. It says don't yield to it. When we step out and trust God, that's when peace meets us. Regardless, when we are obedient, regardless of the situation. Let me ask you, what are you facing that might only take a step of courage? Most of you know, uh, my first mission trip, I went to India when I was only 16. It was an amazing trip, awesome. I wanna share a story, though, of complete fear, stress, and worry that I had. Uh, now picture me, teenage me, on my first mission trip, I'm only 20 now, but out of the country, away from my family and comforts of my own home, I wake up in the middle of the night, sick to my stomach. I'm throwing up, probably the first time I've ever been this ill in my entire life, and I'm not trying to be dramatic. And because like I, how, of how sick I was, I knew something was wrong with me. I knew it wasn't just like the normal kind of sickness. And all I can think of at that moment is, I, 
I don't want to go to an Indian hospital. I don't even know the language. And I'm freaking out. I finally muster up the energy to go over to my team leader who's in the other room, which was Justin, and he's sleeping. And it's like, it's like being a little kid again when you have to go to your parents in the middle of the night and you're sick. And it's like, Justin, Justin, I don't feel good. He wakes up panicked. He gets Allison, who is also in my room. They pray over me and watch over me throughout the night. And let me tell you, all I could do was cry. The pain was so bad. I cried out to God in my own thoughts so much that night. But God takes care of me by the morning. I'm fine. Absolutely no more pain. I'm able to finish off the rest of the trip. And even after being sick, I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to go home. In that moment, I trusted God and I realized I was called to do missions. God had me. But I won't lie. Every time I go on a mission trip, the fear, stress, and anxiety comes back. The what if I get sick again? Even as I prepare for this next India trip, I've had to give my worries to God. Every trip, I chose to give it to God, and I get to see his goodness and faithfulness come to life. I've had some amazing experiences because I chose to look fear in the face and say, my God cares for me. And he doesn't just care about grace. He cares about you. I feel some of you are in here this morning dealing with so much, and you just need to hear this. God cares for you. Man, you. I was preparing for this message. I had some words that I just want to speak out that I felt God was sharing with me. Is there somebody dealing with insecurity? Anybody? Raise your Okay. Uh, anybody else? Okay, I just pray right now, I speak to insecurity just to be gone, that it wouldn't be something that you feel binds you, that feels suffocating, but you would just feel a release. I pray that God would make himself visible in that moment, that you would really truly experience, man, my God cares for me, even in the midst of my insecurity. Uh, is there somebody worrying about their family? Okay, okay. Uh, God, I just pray for the people who raise their hands. God, I pray that you bring a peace and a comfort. Lord, I pray that you would make yourself evident in that situation, the reason of the worry, God. You know exactly what it is. And God, I pray that you would just intervene. Um, stress and anxiety. Okay. If you guys see somebody with their hand up, if you can keep your hand up, could you go over and pray for them? Okay. Uh, my last one. You guys can pray. Uh, my last one is somebody dealing with health issues. Okay. All right. <laughs> you can get double prayer. It's fine. Uh, I'll just pray right now while people are praying. It's okay for you guys to pray out loud. I don't care if you talk over me. God, I just pray for the people in here that are dealing with health issues right now. And God, you know exactly what the ailment is. God, you know what the issue is. And God, I pray that you would just bring restoration to the body. God, I pray just for a peace and a comfort. God, that there wouldn't even be any worries over the health issue. I, God, I pray for a healing in the name of Jesus. I'm going to go ahead and open into Luke chapter 12. Those of you who are praying, it's okay to keep going, but Luke chapter 12, verses 29 and 30. It says, I repeat it. Don't let worry enter your life. Live above the anxious cares about your personal needs. People everywhere seem to worry about making a living, but your heavenly Father knows your every need and will take care of you. One more scripture in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. It says, anxious fear brings depression, but a life-giving word of encouragement can do wonders to restore joy to the heart. Listen, this passage, a life-giving word of encouragement can do wonders to restore joy to the heart. Grab hold of who God is. Hear him saying that he cares for you, that he wants to give you his peace, and God wants to bless you because he loves you so much that he will never leave you nor forsake you. When you grab hold of these words, it restores joy. I want to share a story that shows what God can do when we hold on to his words. 
it was the last uh, day of the retreat. We had the final service back at their church for the people that didn't get to come on to the weekend retreat. And um, there was this one girl, Josephine, who had come up for prayer multiple times. The pastors called it double dipping and stuff. But uh, we spoke identity over her. And I gave her a word about God giving her boldness. She shared how she had wanted to get words for people, but she needed boldness to pray for them. She hadn't prayed for healing for anyone yet. So, of course, we prayed for boldness and we encouraged her. She goes out to lunch after the service and she gets a word of knowledge that someone has pain right here. And at the restaurant she's at, she asks the guy behind the counter and he says, oh, I'm fine. What I love is that she didn't just stop there. Even after getting it wrong, she looked for somebody else to pray for. As she's leaving the restaurant on the sidewalk, she sees a lady. She asks the lady, hey, do you have the pain? Ends up being the lady, and right then and there, she prays for healing. Lady gets healed. She comes back to church absolutely thrilled. Do you see what's possible when we give our fears to God? God not only wants to take your fears, your stress and anxiety and worries, but he gives you a perfect, perfect peace and he wants to bless you because he cares for you, right? This morning I've talked a lot about giving all of our worries and our cares to Jesus, so how to? I want to read these next two scriptures that I believe will kind of help, really help. <laughs> In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. It says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. My favorite part, tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. Philippians says a couple things that we need to implement. Number one, be saturated in prayer. Be soaked in prayer. Notice that it says throughout each day. It's great to start your day off in prayer, but a lot of the times, man, we forget to just converse with Jesus. Tell him every detail of your life. That's number two. Tell him every detail of your life. As soon as you're dealing with something, tell Jesus first. Don't run to everyone to vent. You can ask for people to pray for you, but go to Jesus first. To sum up these two things, I want to encourage you to go to Jesus for yourselves. It's not selfish. Sometimes we are great at praying for others, but have a hard time going to Jesus when we need things. He not only wants us to share everything that we are dealing with and to pray throughout the day, but he tells us to. My last scripture, Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. It says, refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge that comes your way, one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Matthew brings me to my third point. Deal with each challenge one day at a time. Sometimes we get so focused on the future, or the what's next, the what ifs, the fears of what could go wrong, that we don't take care of what's before us, and that we forget to trust in God in the moment, in the here and now with what's before us. And God wants to show us how much he cares. It starts with today. It starts with the little things, with what is before us. I'll be honest, I've had so many moments of focusing on things down the line that it takes, the stress takes my joy away for the day. And the worst part is, I miss on what God is doing. Don't miss. I wanna leave this with you as you wake up tomorrow. Be saturated in prayer. Tell him every detail of your life. Deal with each challenge one day at a time. Uh, worship team, you can come back up. I actually have one more story to share with you guys. Um, I'll make it quick for the worship team. Uh, when I had shared with you guys about India and getting sick, I sooner or later came to find out that it was menstrual issues. That's the first time it's ever even happened in my entire life. And since I was 16, I've had these issues on and off, on and off. And as I continued to 
grow like it just happened again and again where I was just getting sick and sick and tired of being sick. Literally to the point that I was writhing on the floor with pain. That's how bad it was. And in the midst of it all, I kept reminding myself, God cares for me. And I've had to deal with this for years. And even the moments of defeat, I told myself, God cares for me. And as of this year, I actually had it happen again. I was upset. I remember telling the people around me, I was like, I'm just so tired. I'm tired. And this month actually, uh, this month was actually the first time that I've been good. You know, I didn't think I'd ever be sharing with all of you guys about my period, but I am. <laughs> but um, if you can understand how much pain that it put me through, it was awful. Lasted me probably about two and a half hours at least. But man, through it all, even through the pain and through the times where I was like, God, where are you in this moment? He reminded me that he cared for me in the time that I was crying and I'm in pain. And I just want to tell you that he cares for you through it all. Even in the moments that it is the worst, in the moments you don't think he even cares or he's not, you feel like he's not even there, he cares. So rest on that scripture. Give your worries and cares to him because he cares for you.